welcome back to the Virtual Light broadcast. Our next guest's life journey is by any standards a remarkable one. From sleeping rough on the streets to get away from his dysfunctional family life, to being expelled from school at just 15, from experimenting with drugs and alcohol and running foul of the law, to transforming his life and becoming a non-smoking, fitness fanatic and vegetarian who not only studies shamanism, but is also one of the world's most successful hypnotherapists. Glenn Howard is an author, musician and experienced clinical hypnotherapist who's combined his hypnotherapy skills with an extensive recording knowledge to produce a uniquely effective series of high quality hypnosis recordings that have sold over six million copies. Glenn Howard, welcome. Hi Sandy. Good to have you on the show, Glenn. Glenn you know, you're living proof that no matter how bad our circumstances are, we really do have the power to turn our life around. You're a successful author these days. You, your um, CDs, your hypnosis CDs, your apps have sold millions. And um, you've won accolades for the work that you've done. What was it that persuaded you that you needed to turn your life around? I think it was a case of hitting so many brick walls throughout my life that I you know I was kind of when I was young I was good at being bad I was you know I had a lot lot of determination but I kind of channeled it in the wrong way and you know it took me quite a long time it was you know got by the time I got into my 20s and you know music really took me away from hanging around on the streets because I got into a band in my late teens and that was kind of gave me a positive focus from sort of hanging around with kids who were a little bit off the rails and you know getting up to all kinds of mischief the, getting into music took me away from all that and it was years later that I was playing on the cabaret circuit that I saw a stage hypnotist doing his thing we actually shared the bill with him and it was from there watching him do that uh, the, the hypnotism the stage hypnotism thing that kind of sparked my interest in it but I was more drawn to it for the healing side. I didn't want to do the entertainment thing. Um, I wanted to kind of, the, the thing that I saw in it was that I had a, there was a tool there that I could heal myself with and a lot of my own dysfunction. And that was really what first drew me into it. So, so you were yeah, aware, that, you were aware that you, you wanted to change, but you didn't know how. Yeah, exactly that. I had a lot of negative conditioning inside me that I didn't really know how to fix, you know, all kinds of addictions, drink and drugs, and, and, you know, I was kind of excessive with my behavior patterns. But there was something inside me that knew that I had to change that, you know, to, to make any kind of success of my life, I had to fix that. And it was really when I discovered hypnosis and then, you know, took on a two-year diploma course in hypnotherapy that it kind of pulled me out of that rut. And it enabled me to fix a lot of the dysfunctional patterns inside of me. And from that point on, my life started to go in a completely different direction. So, so that was the catalyst. At what point in that training did you realize that you could make a career out of this? It was, you know, it was a two year diploma and we'd work with each other in a classroom setting. And I also learned self-hypnosis. And that for me was a really powerful tool because I would use the self-hypnosis to, you know, to feel more confident, to feel more positive, and to really change my programming from the inside out. And once I saw it started to work, you know, I put so much energy into it. And I used to meditate on a very, very deep level. And every single night, you know, I'd be meditating for an hour and I'd be, you know, thinking of abundance and success. Because up to that point, you know, my life had been very bleak. You know, I had never, could never hold down a job. You know, I was drinking, smoking, you know, taking all kinds of things. And so that was a real revelation that, you know, it took me off in a completely different path. And so meditation was the tool that helped me to break all those bad habits and free me up and take me in a completely different direction. And, you know, I, I took it with both hands, that opportunity. And then... How long was it before you started to experience, um, you know, the level of success that, uh, you know, you've grown to these days? I mean, was it immediate that you began to be successful or did it take some time? It took a little bit of time. It was almost like turning the tide. You know, the, I had all this, um, 
you know, negative conditioning going on. So it did take me a while to overcome a lot of it. You know, and even today, I'm still drawn to like, you know, new therapies and, you know, different kinds of healing, you know, be it shamanism or energy healing. You know, I, I love that. I love that feeling of clearing dysfunction and becoming lighter and freer and, you know, being stepping into really the person that I'm supposed to be. And, you know, and I love to teach people that as well. So it did take a while to get that momentum going, but the more energy I put into it and the more focus I gave it, you know, I found that it, things sped up and I started to meet the right people at the right time. I started to get luckier and, you know, things started to happen. And, you know, I also got very fit and healthy. That was the other turning point. You know, I stopped smoking in my late twenties and, you know, now I drink very, very rarely, you know, just social, social occasions and, you know, I love keeping fit and keeping clear in my head. And tell us you know, about the a, um, the shamanistic, a, you know, aspect of your work. I mean, you've studied shamanism. What attracted to you to that, and how has it informed your work? Well, again, it was um, it was something that I discovered five or six years ago that you know really resonated with me because you know shamanism basically is about you know going deep inside and clearing you know, your shadow, your, the shadow energy, the kind of darkness inside you on an, on an energetic level. And, you know, I was at a point there five or six years ago where I started to read about it and learn about it and, you know, found a guy in Panama who was doing Skype sessions. He was a shaman. And um, I started off with him doing one-to-one -one sessions on Skype. And then with my girlfriend, Nicola, we, we went out there and spent four months at a healing retreat with him and had, a, had the most amazing experience out there because we were doing ceremonies every single night and working on clearing the shadow and working with nature spirits and, and energy, all kinds of energies. And it was so powerful. And coming back to England, I felt so clear and so, so good. And, you know, so when you have an experience like that and it clears you and makes you feel clean and lighter, you just... You know, you kind of that's my addiction now. Yeah, you want more. So, I mean, do yeah. you actually use shamanism or any of the tools of it in your work, in your recordings, in your sessions? Yeah, I really do. You know, the work that I did then, you know, it kind of imprints on you and it stays with you. And, um, you know, th the things that I learned there, I naturally find when I make recordings now that, you know, I, the, the, the work that I learned out there and the things that I did, they, you know, become very much a part of my new recordings and, you know, my new, I've got working on a book as well at the moment. And, um, yeah, it's something that I continue to do. And, you know, I had, um, I had some fantastic ayahuasca experiences three or four years ago that, again, were all about clearing and, you know, getting lighter and, you know, so all of those experiences and the he the healing I've done before that, the different kinds of healing, you know, the self hypnosis, you know, using the law of attraction to transform my life. You know, I find with the recordings I make now, they're different to the recordings I made five or six years ago. Yeah. You know, they're, and they're they're tainted by the, you know, the work that I've done over the last sort of five or six years with shamanism, ayahuasca, that kind of thing. You know, it's interesting because I mean one tends to come across most hypnotherapists who purely you know do hypnotherapy to help with uh, phobias or problems or whatever but very few in my experience go into the um, more energetic spiritual aspect of it and yet mm. you have you've actually used the solfeggio scales the frequencies in some of your um, recordings haven't you yeah that's that's right we I discovered the sacred tones again about five or six years ago and it was with a friend of mine called Ali Calderwood uh, who's a musician and he his music is very much on uh, a frequency energetic level it's you know very uh, powerful music and we had the idea between us to create music that matched the, f the six main solfeggio tones and these these tones were used to the monks in sacred times, ancient times, used to chant these tones, and each tone works on a works with a specific frequency that helps to heal certain things. So, for the, example, the first one it's 396 hertz, and that helps to it kind of works with the base chakra, and it helps to clear uh, feelings of guilt and fear, you know, at a very deep cellular level, and 
So Ali would create the music for that frequency at 396 hertz. And then between us, we created a meditation that went over the top of it. And, you know, so the combination of his music, the solfagio tone itself, and my meditation, you know, created something quite unique that we could never have done on our own. What? And we did one for each of the six tones. And they've all got a different flavor to them, but we just get amazing feedback on them. You know, even the guy that actually discovered the tones, a guy called Len Horowitz, he got in touch with us and he said, you know, tell me more about these recordings you've done because, you know, I'm just hearing good things about them. So it was, it was lovely to create a project like that so organically and, you know, and really connect with people. The end result was, was really pleasing. What sort of um, responses, you know, feedback are you getting from people? I mean, what experiences are they having? Well, every day, I mean, I'm getting emails and uh, messages and posts on, you know, Facebook and, um, you know, the social media and the app store. And it's just, it's just lovely to read these stories from people because I make the recordings in my studio here and I put them out there. And then once I've done them, I kind of forget about them and move on to the next project. And it might be five years later, somebody messages me and said, I've just had an life-changing experience with this recording and they'll ask me all about the recording and it's I have to listen to it again because I've forgotten it yeah it's, it's amazing love. isn't it's it fantastic that you can I love impact, it. I love it. impact yeah people. with a, with a yeah. and um, because I was a musician sorry because I was a musician it was an easy progression for me to start making recordings because you know I was I always had a little studio in my house and the combination once I learned hypnotherapy and seen you know a few thousand clients and I decided to start making recordings, you know, it was a very organic process and it, it just kind of worked. And yeah, I've, I've enjoyed that journey. You wrote a book called The Answer, Supercharge the Law of Attraction and Find the Secret of True Happiness. And, you know, the interesting thing about that book, The Secret spawned so many copycats, um, but yours is actually quite different. Um, what inspired you to write that book? It was really a lot of my own experience, um, you know, discovering hypnosis and self-hypnosis and combining that with the law of attraction because it was really those two elements that, you know, propelled me out of a, you know, quite a stuck place, you know, into a place of abundance and success and happiness. And so, you know, it was quite an easy book for me to write because I just drew upon a lot of my own experiences and you know put my heart and soul into writing the book and you know it, it was um it was a nice mixture and that's that's been a, a book that's yeah d done done well it's out there and i think it's on kindle now it's um been released in the states so it's done well i have a question about hypnotherapy um many of the new kids have um I think the new word to describe it is neurodiversity. You know, their neurology is different. And we call those kids, uh, you know, spectrum kids or Asperger's or autistic. Um, do you think that hypnotherapy can work with them? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if I'd have had it back when I was a kid running riot and getting into all kinds of trouble, it would have without a doubt helped me. And because of because of my background I've always been good when parents have brought their kids along to see me I've always been able to connect with them and I, had a, I remember a number of years ago uh, a girl of 15 her mother brought her to see me and she was struggling with all kinds of problems she was a bright kid but she was on the verge of getting kicked out of school and she came to see me and and I kind of had a sense that I could help her because she was you know a bit of a wild child and just gone off the rails and so I worked with her over four or five sessions and kind of got a focus back on her work and her future and, and um, you know, really had a good connection with this girl and she, she went, went along with it and she worked really hard on, you know, at home and self-hypnosis, got back into her studies. And it was three months later, I got a call out of the blue from her and she was in tears because she just got her exam results and she was the top girl in her whole school and she got like 11, 8, a pluses a stars and she was you know in tears because the transformation was so dramatic 
so when hypnotherapy works well it can really be so you know life changing and you know she had the raw talent there but I was able to bring out the the kind of you know the bring her to a peak performance state when she really needed it in her exams. You've done a few um, hypnotherapy recordings for kids. Are you are you uh, thinking about doing any that really focus on helping children focus, um, get confidence, you know, get over their fears? I think that would be very valuable. It would, and it is kind of on my list of things to do. Uh, I'm working on a book at the moment, so once that's done, that will be the the next step. But yeah, that that would be something close to my heart because, you know, I could. It wouldn't be a hard recording to do. I just draw upon my own experiences and think about where I was back then, and you know, put it into them. But I have got a kids recording out there, which is called a children's confidence, and it's kind of for kids between the ages of sort of five and thirteen. So I've done one track that's for the young, sort of younger bracket there, and the second track is for an older group. And yeah, again, I get lovely feedback on that. You know, kids going to sleep listening to my yeah, yeah. My ball balloons. It's lovely. It really <laughs> is. Must be very gratifying to know. I mean, over six million downloads. That's that's a hell of a lot to touch six million people. Well, do you know the thing was when I used when I was talking about meditating when I first discovered that and I was back then I, you know, I, the first clients I went to see I had like a three hundred pound car and I'd park it in the street around the corner and I used to do home visits because I couldn't I didn't know where to work my house was too small. So I used to park this old banger around the corner and go into the house and, you know, I, know, I bought a nice briefcase, so that kind of worked. <laughs> but back, back in those days, I used to visualize, you know, being abundant and, you know, my recordings going out then. It, there were cassettes back in those days. And I used to visualize these cassettes going out and selling all over the world. And that's the key to when you uh, do your work on abundance and the law of attraction. Don't put a limitation on it. Because I didn't. And, you know, to think I've sold six million now, it would have blown my mind to think back then I couldn't you know there were my conscious mind would have not probably said well how are you ever going to do that but you know in this day and age people you know look on the app store find my sleep recording download it and listen to it straight away so the world has changed and you know I kind of was in the right place at the right time um, but that's what I was meditating on you know, I have so, to ask you this question because in your bio, you know, it actually says that you were in so much trouble with the law. You were actually on first name terms with the local magistrate. Um, <laughs> have you ever encountered that magistrate, you know, since you turned your life around? No, no, I don't think I'd want to. I don't think he'd believe <laughs> I was the same person. You don't think he would. What about the people but, that you knew back then? Have they been shocked by the transformation? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think I, I sometimes get people connect with me who I, I hung around with back then, you know, and, you know, sometimes they've turned their lives around, but some haven't. And it's like weird seeing the, you know, the, 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 the way people move on, you know, I don't know. I just had a desire to, to do good. You know, I was a bad kid, but I, part of me wanted to do good in the world. You know, I always had that <coughs> desire, you know, to improve my life and, you know, raise my energy that kind of thing but I just didn't know how to do it back then and you know that's why I love helping people other people do that now because you know sometimes you see people and you can understand why they're stuck you understand what it is that's holding them back and that's the bit that I love you know bringing that awareness to them and giving them the tools to transform their life you know you just and, said you know, something um, you said you were a bad kid I don't believe there are any bad kids I think there are kids that do bad things because they don't know any better but I think um, it's just occurred to me that in itself would be a fantastic recording to make for those kids who yeah. really do believe that they're lost that they're bad yeah well I did I because I, I was told I was bad I was told I was stupid I was told I was no good the headmaster kicked me out of the school and he said I was the worst kid he'd had in the school for 10 years or whatever you know, so I lived up to that when I left school. Yeah. And, you know, I ne you're so right. I never met a bad kid who wasn't growing up in a bad environment. Yeah. And, you know, often kids bring, you know, parents bring their kids to see me. And, you know, more often than not, it's the parents who need the therapy, not the kids. Because <laughs> you they help the, the kids. They go back, 
they go back into the same environment that, that created the problem in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you also, I mean, you've got some amazing therapeutic um, recordings. I mean, your pain control one is very successful, and I know your sleep one is, but you've got one um, for spiritual weight loss. How might that be different from another just weight loss recording? So the spiritual weight loss, yeah, that was one that I created. I did a spiritual healing recording when I came back from Pan Panama, having spent four months at the shamanic retreat. And the spiritual healing one was all about spending time, you know, visualizing being in nature and, you know, standing under this waterfall and you're the waterfall is coming down and it's cleansing your energy field and you know so it's kind of a really deep sort of spiritual recording and powerful you know it draws upon animal spirits that kind of thing and so I thought you know the weight loss one you know what about you know people who are kind of stuck on a, a deeper level you know a more emotional energetic uh, problem that's stopping them from you know eating healthily and becoming motivated to exercise and so I made a recording, you know, on that level, on a much deeper sort of energetic level to help people overcome any blocks in their etheric, um, luminous energy field to help them, you know, free them up from any addictions around weight loss. So that's kind of how that one works. It's interesting because there are many, many people, women in the spiritual arena who seem to have developed weight problems and they know it's got nothing to do with food. Um, or, you know, some say that it's about grounding, some say they really don't know what it is, but I can imagine that a, a, a recording that actually addresses the etheric level, the energy level, would be very mm. valuable. Mm. Absolutely, because, you know, I, when I used, to, when I was seeing clients, you know, 25 clients a week, you know, the majority of the people I saw was for weight loss. And you can have 10 people who've got you know, are overeating and got the, you know, the weight problem, but they can all have a different root cause as to why they're doing that. And so, you know, in one-to-one in -one sessions, I really explored, you know, I kind of really go deep and get to the heart of the problem. You know, and why, why was it? Why are you, you know, eating the wrong things? Why can't you stop eating cakes, chocolate or whatever it is? And, you know, what's the block? And, you know, kind of, I think as a, in a one-to-one -one setting, I was good at getting to real to the heart of it and finding out what that person, why they were stuck. And so with my recordings now, with the weight issue in particular, that's why I've got the spiritual healing one, I've got this sort of mainstream lose weight one, which deals very much with just the motivational side of it and kind of covered all bases. You know, I, I also wrote a book on called Lose Weight Now that... Um, you know, really delves into all, all aspects of, of weight loss. Glenn, you're currently working with mindfulness. Now, mindfulness seems to be something that has captured people's imaginations, attention. I mean, mindfulness to me, you know, is, is really about being present. Um, mm. But it seems there's this whole, you know, uh, industry that's grown up around mindfulness. What is it about mindfulness that attracts you? It is that thing again of just teaching people as, as something as simple as that, as just being, you know, very present, being in this moment and, you know, and how to do that. Because you can, you can say that to someone, but it's hard to, for them, you know, sometimes it takes a bit of practice to, to really understand that and, you know, understand what it is to be present, to be still and in the moment. And so on a recording, you know, I really got into these recordings. I'm making them now with um, a friend of mine, Russ Davey, who's help, helping, he's kind of helped me with the scripts. For the last couple of years, I've piled up with a couple of guys and done co-authored co recordings. And I really enjoy that because it kind of the, the dynamic of what we both bring to it creates something magical. And yeah, Russ is really passionate about mindfulness and he's been working with that for a number of years. And together we've, you know, come up with this great script which really focuses on bringing your awareness into the present moment. You know, through the breath, through observation, and you know, through awareness. And on a recording, I can really, you know, I use a uh, 
what's called a U87 mic, which is a big microphone. It makes my voice sound massive. And so you can really get them into that state where they get really present and centered. And so that's kind of, you know, what I'm working on at the moment. And, you know, I love it. If I get inspired, I make good recordings, you know, because yeah, I'm, I'm into course. it at that moment. Yeah, because you're so, following your passion then, aren't you? That yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people. I can, ne- I can never, you know, when I, I was with Orion for a number of years, and I'd have to write books within three, three months, and sometimes it was to a certain brief, and I always found that a little bit difficult. There's nothing better than when you're inspired about something, or whether it's shamanism, mindfulness, the solfagio tones, and then making a recording off the back of that when you're really inspired and you're buzzing from it, and kind of always the best things I've done have come at those times when. You know, I'm, I'm I'm doing it myself and enjoying it, and you know that that's where it flows, the creativity. Before we close, Glenn, um, your new book that you're working on, I mean, it's a very apt title. I mean, you can really speak to this, can't you? It's called Renew yeah. Yourself. <laughs> what yeah. what is it? Um, what have you actually got in the book? It's um, it's kind of I'm only about a third of the way through at the moment, so it's early days, but. Again, you know, I'm really inspired with this book because it's about, you know, really, you know, using the tools that I've learned. It's, there's a mixture of shamanism in there. There's a mixture of hypnotherapy, self-hypnosis, meditation. Um, and it's about really, you know, drawing into your awareness the things that are holding you back. Because, you know, the more the more healing I've done over the years, the more I've realized that that's that's the big key to it you know once something comes into your conscious awareness up from your subconscious from your shadow energy and once you really see it and identify it that's a big step towards the healing process and with this book it's it's about that it's about you know really understanding yourself a bit more going kind of going deep inside yourself and through through meditation through self hypnosis through shamanic techniques through eating healthily and you know positive developing a really positive mental attitude you can really you know change transform your life and and live a you know raise your consciousness consciousness and your vibrational energy and when you do that you know you you have a different view of life you see things in a very different way and you know it's kind of my journey from where i'm at now to being that little street punk you know 16 15 16 years of age you know tattoo dog collar screen hair you know, <laughs> to where i'm at now <laughs> well you're a great you're a great um testimony to the book aren't you yourself i mean and that's the nice yeah. thing about your work you're not just preaching to people you're really talking from experience yeah well I, I i was never very good at reading a book and then teaching someone about something you know i've always kind of had to live it yeah. to be able to teach people it and understand it and you know that's kind of you know it's a tough journey and i wouldn't want to do it again but <laughs> but what a great now. service i mean you're living it so that we don't have to oh that's that's it yeah maybe maybe that was my journey that was what the divine they said right you've got to go through all this but yeah. it's going to pan out good in the end so yeah. don't yeah. worry too much you're helping six million people how bad is that yeah <laughs> you might see a magistrate a few on the way but you know, yeah it's going to pan out in the end glenn when is the book going to be available uh, well, I uh, probably, I would think, where are we now? We're in uh, July, so I should think it's going to be middle of next year. Okay. I've still actually got a bag of publisher for it, so uh, <laughs> that will be, I guess it will be middle of next year. Glenn, it's been a real joy to speak with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sandy. Good luck. Bye. Bye-bye. So if you want to know more about Glenn's work, you can go to glennharold.com and also you can find a lot of his recordings at hypnosisaudio.com. We'll be back in a few moments, so do stay tuned.